Good morning. Welcome to the uh, 20th day of uh, November 2016. Just a few more days to my kiddo's birthday. I've been having lots of fun with that. In fact, there was an event that occurred yesterday, kind of a birthday related event that uh, precipitated uh, the addition of two new principles. Two new principles. What am I going to do? How am I going to have a, enough room over here on the screen? I'm going to have to tighten up the font and uh, make make room. And what am, what's going <laughs> to Good thing I'm dying tonight because otherwise I wouldn't where's this going to end, right? You know. A hundred principles, two hour long video? I uh, know, I don't think so. I'll have to squeeze it in. So with that in mind, let's get started. Um, it is a uh, Sunday, my uh, my weekend work day, so I'm ready to go off to my driving school job. I'll swing by Starbucks, a different Starbucks, pick up my coffee, and then head on down towards uh, the South Orange County and uh, start the day. Got three students, looking forward to it. I've got one. One of the things I love about this is I get to see the same kids. It's almost, it's all teenagers for the most part. And I get to see them and uh, see them as they progress. And I have some really great kids I get to work with today. So <clears throat> let's get to it. So uh, I'm going to add, insert the new principles of after temperance. Um, and I'm going to try to speed things up in order that I can leave enough room to explain both the uh, principles themselves as well as the circumstance which led up to them. Because it was, it was interesting to me how observing from the... Uh, Frost around for a second. Interesting how the facts of the real world <clears throat> precipitate these uh, ideas. So the first thing was, uh, oh, here we go. So here we go, right into it. Uh, the affirmation of human and civil rights. I just, I'm gonna go fast. I just wanna make sure that I don't, uh, you know, step on the toes of the uh, of the few or the, uh, or the, or the singular. <laughs> few in the singular. It sounds like some recruiting slogan for uh, the military. The few, the singular, the, I don't know. <laughs> is it, you know, is it, you don't, we're trying to pursue good. We're trying to pursue virtue, which I'll define in just a, a moment, or maybe not. At the very end, it probably won't be a moment. At the very end of this video. Um, and uh, we've got to do so in such a way that we're not uh, doing so at the expense of those who can't protect themselves from the many. Let's leave it at that. Moving along. Three objectives. One, the objective of developing and maintaining good sound life principles. Exactly what this is all about. This Making this video is all about that activity. Two, the um, uh, development, of the cultivation of good emotional reactions to the world around us. As I like to say, this absorbing the speed bumps of life while stay keeping a steady equilibrium. The word I particularly like is equanimity. I love that word because it, it balances, it, it describes it so well, moving <clears throat> relatively unperturbed despite the uh, all the raging uh, challenges of, of life, uh, all the all the disappointments and upsets and joys and, and happiness and, and, and anticipatory letdowns and all these things that happen through it all. You're just kind of moving at a s smooth, steady, steady pace, holding our holding our balance to it all. That's uh, that second principle. <clears throat> we mainly do that through the ex execution of temperance, but uh, it's also achieved through the uh, recognition and the adherence to the other principles. Next is the third objective, which is the uh, performance of good actions. Simply doing darn good things in accordance with the objective, or the, in accordance with the principles. The principles lay the groundwork and the structure, the framework against which we live our life, uh, uh, which uh, which help us to live our lives in a way that's in accord with our life goal, which in, for me, it's the principle of virtue, uh, is, is the life goal of doing, of doing, um, of improving the well-being of as many as possible. So, hey, I did that pretty quickly. I got through my objectives. Let's move on now to the uh, 12 principles. How am I ever going to do this? The first principle is the atomic principle. The universe is made of bits and pieces. Compounds formed of molecules, formed of atoms, formed of subatomic particles, formed of smaller stuff still, in the end, all a bunch of energy, you know, kind of a frozen state and transitioning from that. Even you, buddy, watch it, because those molecules of yours are subject to, uh, to uh, disruption and damage if you crash on these slippery uh, s roads. It rained last night here in Southern California, a rare and a special thing. So uh, that's the caution right there, is remembering that we're made of atoms so that we uh, take that into account 
in living our lives and live it with some caution, some some uh, some anticipation, and a whole lot of um, of uh, recognition that the moments are fleeting. And if you have something that you want to do, uh, if, that if I have something that I want to do, I better do it now uh, or at the earliest convenient opportunity. The uh, next thing is, like this video, I really don't want to make this video this morning, but I really wanted to lay down these two new principles because I'm going to be dead by tonight. And if I didn't do it, they'd be gone. And I want to start enjoying them. You know, this is a very selfish activity. I want to start enjoying them uh, by by bringing them forethought in my mind, by forefront in my mind uh, on a regular basis. And so I can I have a chance to enjoy them today if I can uh, enumerate them. So next is the uh, principle of uh, nature. Everything in the universe has a particular nature. And this was helped also, this is one that helped stem one of the new principles. And observing that nature and, I, and cataloging it really helps us to get by. Yesterday, I'm right going by Costco right now. Yesterday I had that experience. I was driving into Costco to fuel up my wife's car. I took her car out, washed it, and I was taking it by to put some fuel in it. And as I was driving up, that usual madness to get into the Costco gas station, which is really cheap, so a lot of people there. And I told her, as I was driving up, I said, what is the nature of the Costco gas station? And the nature is that it's it's a place for fueling stop uh, that, that's very cheap and, and affordable. And as a result, there's a lot of people, especially on a weekend, uh, and they're, uh, there'll be lots of madness at the entrance to get in, to get in that long series of queues and find a spot. And telling myself that before I actually got there decreased the amount of anxiety as I approached. I wasn't I wasn't surprised by the fact that there was this madness to get to the pump. And uh, I just kind of found my play, place and you know filtered in until I found a good spot. You know, because I, I was ready for it. I recognized the nature of Costco. Likewise, I try to recognize the nature of everything, including myself, so that I can live in a better accord with that and this. Sorry if I'm running so fast. I haven't even had my coffee yet, but I'm trying to make sure that I can get all this within 30 minutes. That's the principle of nature. Three, the social principle. Social principle simply states that human beings are social animals. We, uh, Our best lives are lived uh, towards social ends. We need one another. We kind of, we, there are people who can live alone, but they, I think they sacrifice a lot for that. And I'm one of them. I'm one of them to probably do that, but I recognize that uh, my life would be uh, not not as rich or, or, or that's the word. And maybe that's controversial, but for me, I'm a guy that really doesn't need people too much. I, I don't have much need of friends, and I don't have much need of socializing with people. I'd much rather be alone most of the time. Yet, at the same time, I want to be social because I know it it's it's a very rich and uh, purposeful uh, end. And you don't have to necessarily have a family to do that. You just have to you have to take time to uh, to to be to be social. For me, and, and it's less it's less work now. Now that I, I, it's it's something that because I see the benefit of it, and I and I and I not just for me but for others as well. I feel more I feel like I'm a better, more contributing member of society. Let me order my coffee real quick, just a second. Good morning. Hi. Hey. Yes. Could I get a venti-sized extra hot latte, please? Thank you. Done it. Thank you. Thanks. Next principle is uh, temperance. Temperance is the uh, um, control of our uh, consumption. Uh, control of consumption of not only things like alcohol, tobacco, uh, food, uh, exercise, work, uh, play, all these things are, are, you can temper your consumption of these things, but most importantly for me, the temperance, uh, the con exercising controlled consumption of emotions, which rise in us and we have a kind of an appetite for them. And uh, we can rah, 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 gobble up the emotions and explode out of our body with the anger, frustration, lust, whatever it means. So many, so many of the, uh, the non-mature, playing my hand, non-mature behaviors that we engage in are a result of, uh, of not tempering our consumption of emotions. So I try to, uh, Try to do that whenever possible. And boy, that makes so much difference. Wow. Temperance is, is it, like I've said before, it's the monkey wrench in this thing. It's the one I've always got in my hand. The monkey wrench is a strange, just a handy tool. You can use it for a lot of things. Mm. Okay, now getting on to the new stuff. Um, 
I have to kind of juggle because I'm here in the Starbucks thing and this is not the optimal place to do this because it requires clear thought and an interruption is going to going to dissuade that. So um, here we go. There's two. Uh, first of them is the principle of maturity. Now the principle of maturity on surface sounds simple, right? It's good to be mature, but I thought it would be worthwhile to to um, delve into it just a little bit. Uh, I was thinking yesterday, and maturity really consists of two components. So these would be sub sub principles within maturity. First is the uh, is is wisdom, and the second is fortitude. Wisdom is the uh, achieved understanding of how the world works that only comes through experience. So you can't really you can't really teach wisdom. Wisdom has to be gained and that's why wisdom is often found more fully um, uh, matured in the elderly in the, in the as we get older not a lot of wisdom in in the young even though their parents might try to tell them impart wisdom upon them they usually have to figure it out for themselves so but as we as we gain wisdom and we understand how the world really works we become that's one p part of becoming more mature but there's a second part and that is uh, fortitude Fortitude is our ability to um, persevere in spite of um, the challenge. And I'm just realizing right now that that's a lot like temperance, uh, but it's a little bit different in a way. Temperance is the controlled consumption of emotion. Fortitude is the persistent that we persistence that we uh, bring to bear in, in going through a challenging circumstance, whether we understand it or not. Now it's interesting. Because both of these, wisdom and fortitude, together contribute to maturity. But, in fact, of the two, fortitude is more potent in some ways because it can be trained immediately and doesn't require a lifetime or decades of, uh, of, of, of experiment, life experiment, to gain. So this is why, for example... Military will require will require a great deal of discipline, in, 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 which is a form of like a kind of an looks a lot like maturity in a way. The best way to do that is through uh, training fortitude. So that's why you have boot camp where you train people to basically uh, carry on and persevere despite their bodily re bodily body rejection. Their mind is 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 revolting and their best senses are saying don't but the uh, but their 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 ability to ch charge up that hill and pursue the enemy that's what it's a very targeted aim but it also yields benefits in other 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 ways the ability to have fortitude through life's challenges and the interesting thing is that fortitude can can be exercised without in the absence of, of wisdom we can we can just do it because we are trained to do it without actually knowing for better or worse so if you want a shortcut to maturity it's fortitude and you can like i said you can get that at an early age sports give that military training does that other uh, martial arts do that as well it's a, it's a very uh quick path to more mature behavior but to really enjoy the real full benefits of 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 the real full richness of maturity you need to have wisdom as well and that comes in a slower process that can't really be trained hey i think if i do say so myself i think that came out all right there we go so we have wisdom no we have maturity which is composed of wisdom and fortitude which taken together uh, make us uh, our better selves and i'm just about to uh, pull up here in just a second hey i'm at 1358 that's not so bad that's not so bad here we go. Just a moment, please. Ah. And uh, there was an event that happened. All of this uh, came out of an event that happened yesterday with my daughter, uh, taking her to the hair salon for her birthday. And she wanted to get her hair cut, and she wanted to get it colored. And uh, good morning. What are you on? All right. Thank you. Have a good Sunday. See you, you too. Thanks. Bye. She wanted to get it cut and colored, and uh, my my wife. Uh, 
recommended that she find a, a Japanese hair salon. There's a couple, there's one right here actually. We were trying to get in that one, but we couldn't get an appointment right away. And being a teenager, she wanted it right away. So we tried a couple of Japanese hair salons. None of them were available. And so Emily uh, went with a recommendation from a friend of hers who recommended a salon, another a Japanese girl. And we thought, okay, well, this, this might work out. We'd never heard of it, but it turned out to be kind of a disaster because uh, the salon, um, Turned out it was owned also by somebody who wasn't Japanese, didn't have any experience with Asian hair. Emily definitely has more Asian hair. And the whole thing was just a disaster. Just, you know, wound up in tears. It was a very unhappy, happy event. Um, you know, she was able to contain herself there. Very expensive, unhappy, unhappy event. And I realized then that uh, my daughter's just, and my wife and I, both of us, we, we were all, all of us were unhappy and, and disappointed. And the, the salon didn't do a bad job. They, they did a good job with the best that they had. And of course, the teenage expectations are rather a challenge as well. And I realized that um, all of this was precipitated because my daughter lacked maturity. And in a way, my wife and I lacked maturity in a way. And I realized that there were two components to that. The first part, uh, the uh, wisdom. The wisdom to know, for example, that my, my wife and I, my wife in particular, had the wisdom to know that, for her experience, that if you want to have good, someone to handle your hair well, if you've got Asian hair, you need to find someone who's experienced with Asian hair. And that even though Emily couldn't find somebody right away, that we would, that we were sure was 100% Japanese hairstylist, some place we weren't sure. It definitely didn't seem like it was 100% hairstylist, and that was the problem that it would be worthwhile to wait. It would be a payoff, right? You'd wait a little bit. The price of the price of getting what you want would be a, take a more mature approach and have some patience. And then when it didn't happen, when, you know, the consequence of Emily's, you know, immediate wanting to have it right away, which is such a, you know, a teenage thing. I remember being that way myself. Went, it led to my wife and I being sad because we were, we wanted her to be happy and she wasn't happy. And that was the fortitude part. So my wife and I needed required to get through that. To, to, to be mature, we had to have fortitude through our daughter's pain, realizing that this was the necessary price for her beginning steps towards mature, more, a mature understanding of the world. She would never make that mistake again because she had lived that lesson. So I saw then that it was, it was uh, um, wisdom and fortitude demonstrated a lack thereof, demonstrated by in the first case by my daughter and in the latter case by my wife and I, that led to such disappointment. And if we can combine those two together, wisdom and fortitude, we become a very powerful uh, agent in the uh, movement through life. And so that's how that formed. And then, so now the next one, that dovetails now into the uh, next part. The new new principle, which I'm simply going to call, um, ah, you're walking along the road and <laughs> somebody walking across. There's the next one is um, uh, the principle of paradigm. Now, this also yield, yielded immediately after from the first the first one, the principle of uh, of of maturity. What happened was I realized as I was sitting there in that salon, I realized that we had two worlds going on there um, the world that was it wasn't it wasn't a typical American the, the salon was owned by two owners or one was a Japanese owner and the other was I won't name the culture it was from but it wasn't an Asian culture it wasn't a, a Western culture really either another was from another one I, I don't know why I'm hiding the culture I just don't want anybody to take think in any way that I'm trying to single them out as being bad or anything like that they're not they're great I mean they really did a good job for me it looked exactly like the picture <laughs> But my daughter had she what she wanted. But the thing was, very very different culture, very different from from Japanese and very different from American. It's a, definitely a, a subculture. Um, and when I when even when I was talking on the phone the day before making the res, res the appointment, I was like something in my mind was going wait this isn't this isn't quite this is I just had a bad feeling about it. And then when I was sitting there, I was looking at it, I was going this is not right. This is like it's almost like trying to get you know the wrong chef to make 
the right food. You know, someone who's been trained in one cuisine style to make a different type of food, it's probably not gonna come out the way you expect, right? This was a case where we wanted to get a Japanese haircut and coloring from someone who really operated in a different sphere. And that's when the word paradigms came to mind. It was a paradigm, not a paradigm shift, but a paradigm collision. My daughter had given a, a wish list to a talented and skilled beautician operating in a separate paradigm who executed according to her paradigm values and result, what resulted was something that wasn't quite what Emily wanted. And then I realized, I was thinking about it more and I was realizing that, that is, that's everything. That's always, that's everywhere. Cultures, cultures, sexes, um, religious groups, ethnic groups, language, it's all paradigm. There's everyone, paradigm of course being, you know, the a situation, almost like a perspective, a situation or a way, it's a, it's a model, it's a methodology. It's a, it's, a, it's a view, it's a model, it's the methodology, it's the way things are done. The, the paradigm, for example, the paradigm of, uh, of social government in the United States is, uh, is, a, is a representative uh, democracy. Someone's going to correct me and say it's not quite what it is, but you know what I mean. You know, they have the elected, elect, we elect officials that represent us and uh, we have our branches of judiciary and like that's our paradigm versus a, a monarchy paradigm or, or, a, or a communist, uh, a, so, a socialist paradigm or whatever the case may be. And humans, each of us has our own paradigm and our own groups have their paradigm and our subgroups have their paradigm and our cultures have a paradigm and our religious has a paradigm. Religions have a paradigm and these clash and I realized then that uh, a powerful thing to do would be to recognize that. So when I walk into a situation, like for example, when I walk into the Japanese market with my wife, I need to recognize, even though it's familiar to me, I'm walking into a separate paradigm and I can handle that better if I keep that in mind and, and recognize it's almost like uh, the nature, oh boy, I just realized that really connects really well with the nature, with the, the principle of nature, of the nature of things. It's the nature. I wonder if I can combine that. I wonder if I can combine that, save myself a principle. I might do that. The nature and paradigm are very similar. But nature refers to everything. Paradigm refers to our us from our perspective. I'll work on that. Who knows how this will flip? how this will lay, sort out, shake out when I get this video uh, all together. Who knows what's going to say over there. Anyway, I'm working on it. Okay, so let's move on because uh, I am at 22 minutes, almost 23 minutes. So um, next, so I got my two new ones out of the way. The next principle seven, I think, is the best seat in the house. Where I am right now is just fine. So it's a, the, it's a, it's the principle by which I, wi I do, I wish I don't want to want to be anywhere else or to want to want to be someone else or to want to want to do anything else. Just being okay with uh, whatever the situation is now with the caveat that I'm still going to continue to try to improve things. So it's not a matter of just sitting on, uh, you know, accepting whatever circumstance I'm in, but work towards, work towards, excuse me, work towards improvement while all the while being fine with wherever I am. I'll tell you, this is a powerful principle. Uh, just since I started uh, utilizing, it's probably been less, a little more than a week. Um, I've really noticed that it's made a difference uh, in the in-between moments between the uh, objectives. You know, when I try to get to things like today, my objective, I would say that under my normal situation, I would say that when I get done with work, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> I would rather be done with work. But now, under this new perspective, I'm okay with where I am right now. Going to work, I got a long day of work ahead of me, um, and I'm okay with that. And I'm going to be okay with when I'm done with it. And whatever circumstance I'm in is the best seat in the house, um, given the fact that hey, it's uh, it beats the alternative. <laughs> which is not existing. Okay, now next is uh, the principle of, um, oh good gosh, what would normally after that would be, I think it would be uh, reason, I think, right? I may, I may be getting confused. Hold on, hold on. Atomic principle, principle of nature, social principle, temperance, principle of maturity, principle of paradigm, best seat in the house, Reason is the governing faculty, the way by, by which we come to understand the world. I've lost track. I've lost track. I'm losing something in there. That's okay. I'm just going to push forward. 
it'll take a while for me to get these sorted out of my head with this new number of things. Uh, that's why I do it every day. Uh, reason is how we look at the world, uh, all the uh, facts, make sense of them, come up with arguments, measure those uh, our results, see if they're true, if they're accurate, if so, then we cautiously move forward. If not, then we revisit our, 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 our facts and arguments, gather more facts and make new, conclude, make new arguments and, and, new, and test for new results. There you go. <laughs> Virtue is the, uh, uh, I'm definitely missing something, I think. Virtue is the uh, purpose of life. It is the, as I define it, the uh, improvement of well-being. Well-being defined as the objective of uh, getting things better, you know, making things better for people in, an, in a meaningful manner, in a real measurable manner. For example, improving quality of education or fuel efficiency of automobiles or uh, better better methods of gathering uh, energy, uh, better monetary uh, distribution systems, better uh, a more equitable uh, distribution of wealth. Oh, I said it. <laughs> Things like that. The great thing about it is we can argue it. We can discuss it. We can, we can come to agreements together about what constitutes a better, an improvement in well-being and then uh, enact uh, principles or enact, just make decisions and add, uh, uh, vote elect legislators and enact laws that uh, uh, fulfill those or pursue those. Next is the principle of um, what is it that I'm missing? <laughs> That's not a principle. It's the principle of uh, uh, willful time management. Wow, I'm so off. I'm at the I'm at the end and I'm missing two. I gained two and I lost two, and I don't know what they are. So I'm at ten. I'm at willful willful time management. Willful, yeah, willful time management. Willful time management is simply the uh, ability to uh, uh, take conscious control of my execution of time, not letting the time slip through my fingers like sand, but uh, to parcel them out at, an, at, at the pre-apportioned rate. I mean, I can't control the, I can't control the the the, the, the execution of time, but I can control how, what I'm doing during that time and making better choices. And, and better action. So there's two components. Let me jump into those now. Having lost two principles in the process of gaining two, I'll have to work on this. It'll come. Um, first is, uh, this is my first time I've added two at once. Okay, the first thing is the uh, today's thought plan. It's uh, four pieces. One is the uh, um, uh, co collecting my thoughts before breakfast, composing my thoughts over lunch. I won't get to do that today because I'm working uh, during lunch. The, uh, collect the uh, recording my thoughts over dinner just in time for death by bedtime. Next is my uh, today's action plan. Today's action plan is, uh, well, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drive, keep both hands on the wheel, drive safely, adjust the temperature in here, and uh, when I get to work, I'm gonna take a pee because I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> More TMI. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, collect my, my paperwork uh, for the day for my three students, uh, clean up my, get my car ready to go, my driving school car, uh, wash the windows, adjust everything nicely, uh, and then prepare and head out for my first student, uh, which I, a boy that I really uh, do uh, have enjoyed uh, teaching, really fine, fine lad. I'm um, gonna be, look forward to seeing him, uh, helping him with his second lesson, then I have uh, two, another second lesson after that, and a first lesson after that. Um, usually I teach three, to three lessons for my students, six hours total each. Um, and then when I'm through with that, I'll go home. I got a lot of my weekend work done. I, created, I made my chili yesterday. Um, I took care of a lot of things, so I'm gonna do my swim, power through uh, probably 60, 70 laps, uh, really get some done, do my uh, abdominal workout, uh, work on uploading this video. Oh my gosh, it's like an accident up there. And uh, proceed, proceed along, uh, and then I'll die. Now let's get on to the uh, rotten day forecast. Today's gonna to be a rotten, you know, and I do this in order to set a low low expectation for the day because a lot of our upset and frustration comes from uh, uh, our undue high expectations for how things are gonna work out. And it sounds like it's defeating, like if I, if I, if I set such a low expectation that it's gonna be self-defeating, but I don't find that to be the case. I find instead that it, uh, it, I know that I'm, I know that it's tongue in cheek in a way. Like when I say that my wife and daughter are going to die, I don't necessarily mean that that's really going to happen. But I don't expect that to happen. But in a way, I do. Uh, it's a sobering thing. I really do find that I take the days more seriously, and I take the time, especially with my loved ones, more seriously as well. 
So, uh, my wife and daughter will die today, as will a lot of other lo uh, lovely, loved people in my life. Better take the time to call some of them. I'll try to do that. I'll maybe try to call one today. I like that idea. See the, the dividends it, it yields? Um, I'll lose my job. I'll lose my reputation. I hate these big high level stuff. I'd rather drill down into deep detail, but I don't want to give out too many details of what I, of my job. I've got to keep that private and my employer's uh, informa information private. So I can only say those high level things. But I will say this, I'm going to, I'm going to have moments where I'm going to break down. I'm not going to, I'm going to fail in my uh, execution of temperance and all my principles and I will become a, a frivolous, um, <coughs> petty, uh, undisciplined, uh, uh, you know, guy that basically uh, stumbles along and upsets people and embarrasses myself and ruins uh, everything. But then that sounds like you're too self-focused. It's hard to do this without either giving away too much information, sounding like a self-indulgent prick, <laughs> or uh, certainly all in all cases sounding like you're, you know, some, some you know, uh, what was the guy Linus on uh, Peanuts that was always, oh, it's, everything's going to be terrible. Eeyore, sounded like Eeyore. Anyways, I think that's enough. I'm at 31, almost 30, closing to 32 minutes in a bit. I better uh, stop before I run out of memory. Thank you for watch, watching through this. I have no idea I, what those two principles were I met. I'll think about to find a way to combine uh, the principle of nature and the principle of um, a paradigm, or maybe they did long deserve separate. So I'll think about that after I turn this off. Have a, have a, have a, have a good life, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.